Hello, I'm here again. Tell me if you can hear me. Uh, I'm sorry the sound wasn't working before. Hopefully you can hear me. I have the microphone here. I just tweak the connections. So just type in uh, where you're... Perfect now, says Melissa. Marvellous. Ben Hopkinson. Great. Thank you. Okay, well, welcome everybody. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but we're here together and gradually we're all gathering. Wonderful. I was just explaining to you that I've just got back from the hospital visiting my mother who's 93. And uh, so I'm feeling a little sad. Um, but what I was saying was uh, that it's in times like this that I really appreciate having a spiritual path, having a sense of belief, having uh, believing in the other world, actually, uh, believing that we have a, there is a continuity of consciousness after death, uh, which is why I posted that video. I don't know if you've seen it. I posted it up on the, around the winter solstice uh, called uh, the fear, um, Overcoming the Fear of Death or something like that. It's a wonderful TED talk by a doctor called Thomas Fleischmann. If you haven't seen it, do look at it. It's just fantastic. And the, um, all the family here have watched it and it's very reassuring. So, uh, so it's lovely to hear Aidy from New Zealand. Fantastic. And somebody down the road from Brighton, Emma Raven Noir. Wonderful. Okay. So, you know, um, last week we talked about what it meant to be an ovate a little bit. And this week, uh, the previous week, we talked about what it meant to be a bard. And this week, I wanted to talk a little bit about what it means to be a druid. And um, there's a way in which, you know, I equated the bardic work as working with the heart, opening to the wisdom of the heart, finding those stories, that color, that connection, that sense of community. Uh, is one of the ideas of working in the Bardic tradition. And then as you move on to working in the Ovate tradition, um, we are working with the body. Although we're working with the other world and with shamanic journeying and traveling into other worlds, uh, but we're also at the same time rooting ourselves deeply in the earth, connecting with plants, with animals, and with our own body, the mystery of our genetics, our ancestry, our heritage, what it means to be embodied in the world. So, so if the bardic grade relates to the heart, the ovic grade relates to the body, I'd like to suggest that the uh, druid grade relates to the mind. So we have body, heart and mind that we're working with through these three levels. And the reason that we get to the mind last in that sense, why it's third in line, is because we really need to open our hearts these days. You know, our educations are focused on, on feeding our minds and developing our minds uh, with uh, a consequent lack of emphasis on, on working and feeding the heart. So we start off with the heart and uh, we move to our bodies and then we move to our mind. And uh, so in the Druid work, we engage with the philosophy, with ideas, with ethics. Um, and uh, there's a way in which you might say that the juicy topics get covered. So that if we if we kicked off with topics like ethics right at the beginning, uh, maybe people wouldn't take all the training. Uh, but by the time you get to the Druid grade, you realize that these, these things are important. And you work with the ideas of, of leadership, the idea of leadership and of giving. If the spiritual life is characterized by sorting yourself out and being of some use, to be very mundane about it, uh, uh, sorting yourself out, in other words, developing clarity, uh, clearing some of your stuff, and then seeing what good you can be in the world and being of help, radiating, uh, then uh, we, we go through that process in the Bardic and Ovic grades. And then hopefully by the time we get to the Druid grade, there's a bit of clarity and we can start to work with intention and with focus, which is why 
uh, the Druid work is supremely that of coming to understand the true power of the magic wand, what it really means to wield the wand and to work with the wand with intention and focus. Hello from Biela and Vermont, lovely. Um, and so if you think about this, the, the easiest way perhaps to think about what a Druid is, is to um, think of the word itself. This beautiful word formed of two syllables, Drew and Id. Drew, which means uh, the oak, uh, or possibly steadfast, oak or steadfast, two etymologies. And Id, which essentially means wisdom and knowledge. They're both proto-Indo-European roots, so a lovely connection to perhaps our shared spiritual ancestry with our brothers and sisters in India and the Dharmic traditions. But these two proto-Indo-European uh, root words coming together to form the word Druid, which expresses Druidry in a nutshell, beautifully and fittingly because it's connotative. So from the idea of the oak or steadfast, we get strength and we get oak, we get tree, we get forest, we get the wild. And id, we get this, the ideas of knowledge and wisdom. So wild wisdom, the wisdom of the forest. So the Druid is the forest sage. And for to be a forest sage. Let's all be forest sages now as we imagine ourselves seated in the sacred grove. Wonderful tall oaks around us or cedar trees or whatever tree feel right to you or which appear in your grove. And you can sense them all around you, their roots deep in the earth. And sense yourself sitting on the earth now and just letting yourself relax, all the tensions and stresses of the day falling away, feeling really connected to the earth and its healing rhythm. And then take a deep breath in, deep breath out. And as you breathe in and out, you can breathe in the smell of the trees. You know, the wonderful thing about breathing in a, in a forest is you are actually breathing in particles of the tree. There's a whole science to this of the chemicals that the trees excrete through their leaves, which you then breathe into your body. They go into your lungs and through your lungs into your blood. So literally your blood is being changed when you sit in the forest and breathe. Breathing in and breathing out extremely healthy for you. And then you sense these trees like mighty majestic beings around you. And then the sky above you. And here it's night time. I know there's some of you in the other side of the world in New Zealand and South America. For you it's daytime. But my grove has got stars shining above. And I can feel the energy of the stars flowing into me. I breathe in deeply and I breathe in the energy of the sky. And the energy of the sky meets the energy of the earth within the center of my being. And I become aware that around me are fellow Druids, fellow Druids who have gathered from all over the world and we're all sitting here together now. And that's just, just lovely. So even though I've opened my eyes now and I'm looking at the screen, I still can sense myself in the, in the grove. And one of the things that uh, Druid does in, this, in this, uh, this word, this very word of forest sage, is it brings the idea of knowledge, id, from which we apparently get the terms um, witness, wisdom, uh, but it means knowledge too. And so there is a strong tradition of scholarship and of understanding. So Druidry is also a scholarly tradition. 
uh, you know, there are every year books are published on Druidry. Uh, if you if you want to get scholarly, have a look at our Mount Hemus project on the Order's webpage, and you'll see uh, fantastic projects of scholars who are studying Druidry and related subjects. So it's a scholarly tradition, but it's also a living tradition who likes to roll up its sleeves uh, and, and get muddy and dirty too. So I'm going to drink everybody a toast. I feel like toasting you all. So I know we're supposed to be drinking tea, but I've got a, a bottle of, of mead, chocolatey mead, a company started by a member of the order, Chalice Mead Company. Uh, and it really is very delicious. And this one has just got a, a hint of chocolate in it. And as you probably know, mead is the sacred drink of the Druids. And uh, it's colored like the sun. It's one of the world's oldest drinks. And uh, it is said that Arwen sometimes flows through the mead. And so I'm going to drink to your health and uh, take a sip of mead. Now, let's think about um, next week. Uh, I've, we've covered over the last three weeks, we've covered Bard, Ovage and Druid. Uh, it's kind of overview, some, some ideas. And uh, that was cruel, says Melissa. We want some of it. Well, uh, one of these days, the internet will be so sophisticated, I'll be able to sort of hand the bottle through the screen and somehow it'll reach everybody. Um, but how about this? Here's a suggestion is have a think about what you'd like to explore. I'd like to explore all sorts of things related to the spiritual life, life in general and spirituality, what it means to tread the spiritual path. Uh, but specifically, what would you like to discuss here? What would you like to to see us talking about? Um, and let's meet up next week. And what I'm going to do, I see we're having all sorts of drinks here, herbal tea from Charlatan Schwach. Yeah, and um, the Nectar of the Gods. So good health to you all. Um, we'll, we'll meet again next week and just take a moment when this uh, video ends to think about what you'd like to, uh, to discuss and explore. And, uh, and then let's see what we can do. Okay, so, so I'm going to go now. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have another little sip of mead and then I shall uh, read all your comments because spirituality in the city, says Zervi Bell. Yes, yes, there are lots, lots of subjects. So let's do, do put them in. And if I don't get to the sub, your subject next week, uh, you know, I'll, I'll make a note of them all. And hopefully, you know, who knows? We probably won't be able to cover everybody's topic, but it'll be fun doing it and I'll, I'll, it'll be really enjoyable. So. Lots of love to you, many, many blessings, and uh, see you again next week. Okay, bye.